Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, the Mona Lisa. Pascal Cotte, a scientist who studied the famous Mona Lisa for over 15 years, recently looked through over 1,650 images taken by an extremely high-tech camera. He did this to uncover the secrets beneath the finished masterpiece, and he found out that there was a hidden drawing beneath the paint. It all started in 2004, when the Louvre Museum in Paris allowed Pascal to take photographic scans of the Mona Lisa. The only reason he could do such a thing was that Pascal had recently invented a highly sensitive multispectral camera. Since 2004, he has been going through the images trying to recreate the traces of the old work underneath the Mona Lisa. The exact science behind the camera is fascinating. It uses a combination of near-infrared photography and infrared reflectography to reveal underlying charcoal lines and extremely fine details that would have otherwise been missed. While he discovered nothing completely out of the ordinary, there were a few main things nobody knew before. The drawings underneath the Mona Lisa show a previous version with a completely different silhouette. Da Vinci altered her pose, and she even had a hairpin removed that would have given her a different hairstyle. Leonardo da Vinci changed the Mona Lisa multiple times while painting her. He moved her arms around, he played with different hairstyles like he was creating an avatar in a game, and the final masterpiece ended up being completely different from the original. Number 9. The Creation of Adam The Creation of Adam is perhaps the most famous work of art by Michelangelo, depending on who you ask. It's the most famous fresco in the Sistine Chapel, and one of the most inspiring works of art. He created it between 1508 and 1512. According to historians, it was one of the most difficult paintings Michelangelo ever made. You probably recognize the painting, which shows Adam lying on the ground while God comes to him from the sky crowded with angels. Their fingers almost touch, and the whole thing represents God's creation of Adam in his own image. But Michelangelo was a very sneaky painter, and in 1990, medical doctor Frank Lynn Meshberger noticed something that everyone had overlooked for roughly 500 years. God is not only swarmed by angels, he is resting inside an anatomically accurate picture of the human brain. At first glance, it looks like he's in a shroud, or like the thing behind him is a piece of fabric in the wind. It's not exactly clear, but one thing's for sure, the background is the exact shape of the human brain. The outline of the background matches up perfectly with the inner and outer surface of the brain, its stem, the basilar artery, the optic chiasm, and the pituitary gland. Even more shocking is that beneath God's right arm is an angel with a sad expression. This angel is sitting right in the brain's part, which lights up on PET scans when a person experiences a sad thought. God is superimposed over the limbic system, which is the emotional center of our minds. You might call it the anatomical nexus of the human soul. How Michelangelo figured out things that scientists didn't fully understand yet is pretty confusing. But that he incorporated it into his painting as a metaphor, some say for God, being the human mind itself, is shocking. Number 8. Portrait of a Woman Edgar Degas did Portrait of a Woman in the 19th century between 1876 and 1880. Researchers recently looked at the painting using x-rays and discovered a lost work beneath the surface. The artist later covered up this lost work with the painting we see today. The way researchers came to their conclusion was by using x-rays to map metallic elements in the pigments of the painting. This data was then used to build a new image of the hidden portrait in fabulous photographic detail. According to the lead author of the study, David Thoroughgood from the Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery in Australia, people have known something was hiding underneath it since the 1920s, but it wasn't until recently that modern technology finally allowed art historians to reveal it. Future applications of the new research could include creating a timeline of snapshots of work as it was painted, particularly with oil paintings, where each layer of paint is typically left to dry before further layers are added. The painting underneath is the ghostly image of a woman, somebody who looks vastly different from the female who appears in the final portrait. Degas had painted her on the canvas first, then he flipped the canvas upside down and painted over this original woman with the new one. Art historians have identified her as Emma Daubigny, a model for other painters in the 1870s. This covered portrait of Emma is a different version of a different portrait he did of her on a different date. That one is currently hiding in a private collection.
And now for number seven. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Fernando Gonzalez and Peter Make It Happen. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number seven, girl reading a letter at an open window. For a girl reading a letter at an open window, things aren't exactly as they appear. Johann Vermeer did the painting between 1657 and 1659, and just recently, the Gallery of Old Masters in Dresden restored it. During the restoration, which took several years, the experts at the gallery uncovered a hidden image beneath the paint. They discovered an image of Cupid on the wall above the girl at the window. This has become quite the mystery. First, laboratory tests have determined beyond any doubt that someone covered up Cupid after the Dutch artist died in 1675. This is kind of bizarre because nobody knows why someone would have so skillfully erased the picture of Cupid. Cupid gives meaning to the painting. The girl is at the window reading a letter, looking a little sad. With Cupid above her, we get the context that she is reading a love letter. There's some serious love happening in the painting, but that's not completely understood without Cupid and his arrows. With the recovery of Cupid in the background, the actual intention of the painter can now be recognized. It is a fundamental statement about the nature of true love. Number 6. View of Scheveningen Sands Hendrik van Antonissen completed the view of Scheveningen Sands around 1641. The painting shows a pretty ordinary Dutch landscape. There are people in 17th century clothes gathered on a beach, looking out at the water, a small sailboat, and what looks like a fishing boat off to the left. But here's the strange thing about the picture. There is a large group of people gathered on the beach and may seem to be looking at something important. Nobody has ever figured out why so many are gathered in one spot when there is nothing that interesting to look at. Not until now. The painting currently belongs to the Fitzwilliam Museum. They recently handed over the painting to Cambridge student Shan Kwong for investigation. Shan removed a small bit of varnish from the surface of the painting, and that was when she realized something was hiding underneath. It wasn't a face or a piece of an older painting. It was a whale! There are sizable crowds gathered on the beach in the painting because they are staring at a whale. After some very careful alterations, the Cambridge student was able to return the painting to its original state. It looks like somebody liked the painting but thought the whale made it ugly, so they covered it up and patched the whale spot. This was common centuries ago because people did not consider these paintings masterpieces. They were just ordinary decorations people had in their houses. Pretty much the only ones that became great works of art are the ones that survived. Number 5. The Swing Jean-Honoré Fragonard painted the swing around the year 1765. It shows a man's mistress swinging happily from a tree on a swing. And while it at first seems perfectly innocent, there is a secret, darker meaning behind this old painting. Fragonard was a prolific artist during the Rococo period with a unique style of exuberance that set him apart from a lot of other artists in the 18th century. Most notably, he incorporated a lot of drama, intimacy, and even eroticism into his paintings in subtle and hidden ways. This woman swinging so nonchalantly is, according to many scholars, a representation of infidelity and promiscuity. And if you look around in the painting, you'll see there is one man positioned beneath her and another man watching from behind a tree. When you put these elements together, it appears to be showing a husband peeping on his wife and her secret lover. And since the subject of the painting was the artist's mistress, the true meaning of the painting becomes even more clear. The disreputable chatter surrounding the painting and the story it tells only added to its popularity. Over the years, the beautiful and playful piece has become one of the favorite pieces from the period. Then again, this could just be art critics looking into something that isn't there. It could just be a delightful picture of Fragonard's swinging mistress. What do you think? Number 4. Immaculate Conception The painting of the Immaculate Conception of El Escorial, completed by the Spanish artist Bartolomé Esteban Murillo around the year 1665, has just been destroyed. As more and more secrets are being found in some of the world's most famous paintings, scientists have been getting eager to take those paintings and put them under their scanners. But when this painting was brought to be restored, the restoration project was botched. No secrets were found, and the painting was left unrecognizable. This has proved to be as tremendous a disaster as if someone had smudged the face of the Mona Lisa. 
The only good news is that the original is still hanging in the Prado Museum in Madrid. Luckily, the artist painted two versions, and it was the one from El Escorial that was ruined. They are almost identical, both completed by Murillo in the 17th century. The copy is owned by a private collector who hired a furniture restorer to fix up the old painting, but the restorer returned it in a smudged condition. The collector complained, and then the restorer made it even worse. It's honestly hard to describe just how badly he messed up the painting. The loss is considered quite the tragedy. Number 3. The Supper at Emmaus The Supper at Emmaus is a masterpiece that was created by Michelangelo Merisi de Caravaggio in the 17th century. It's one of the greatest treasures currently stored in the UK National Gallery. The painting shows an unfolding drama inside a shadowy inn. The resurrected Christ appears to have just revealed his identity to a pair of disciples. And while it seems pretty clear-cut, art historians believe the painting is filled with secret symbols. One of these secret symbols is almost invisible. You can see it on the basket of fruit almost spilling over the dinner table. The woven basket has an interruption in its weave, two intersecting curves that look exactly like what people today call the Jesus fish. In reality, it's called the ichthys, and it dates back to the second century. Back in the days of Rome, when the Romans persecuted the Christians mercilessly, they used this symbol as a kind of secret sign to say, hey, I'm a believer too. One person would draw half the fish on the ground, and the other person would complete the other half. This was the only way to know for sure that you were in the presence of another who acknowledged Jesus Christ as their Lord. Number 2. The Blue Room Scientists have discovered yet another secret in one of Picasso's paintings. This time, it's the Blue Room, one of the very first recognized masterpieces of Pablo Picasso. Scientists used infrared imagery to identify a rather hefty gentleman in a bow tie slouched in the background. There is absolutely no trace of him when looking at the finished painting. The Blue Room from 1901 appears to show a woman bathing in a room rich with hues of blue. But underneath it all, there is a scowling man with an ample belly, and nobody knows who he is. It was expert Patricia Favero, the conservator at the Phillips Collection, who put together the infrared images of this strange man's face. According to her, she and her colleagues are still trying to figure out who he was, why Picasso drew over him, and what it all means. Picasso frequently painted over a lot of his works, because he didn't like them, or simply because he didn't have enough money for a new canvas. But this one seems especially odd. It's just strange to see the random man creeping around in the background of the woman's blue room. People are really hungry for this. It's a kind of detective work. It's giving them access to Picasso that enriches and adds mystery while allowing them to be part of piecing together a puzzle. The more we understand, the greater our appreciation of its significance in Picasso's life. Number 1. Bacchus Caravaggio painted Bacchus around 1596. The painting is of the great Roman god who represents agriculture, wine, and a good time. It's currently housed at the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, and it contains a really weird secret. Inside the canvas is a small and hardly noticeable self-portrait of the author. He made it pretty vague and indiscernible. Bacchus, the god of wine and fertility, and the Roman equivalent to the Greek Dionysus, is shown in the painting sitting amongst some delicious fruit. He's wearing a toga with a jar of wine in front of him. If you look extremely closely at the wine jug, you can see the faintest image. It's a man inside the wine bottle staring back at you, the face of Caravaggio himself. It's like a long-lost game of Where's Waldo? The portrait is so superbly hidden that no one discovered it for over 300 years. It wasn't until 1913 that the art historian Matteo Marangoni noticed the small head reflected in the wine jug. He also noticed the face looked very similar to portraits of Caravaggio. And after a group of experts investigated it, they all agreed it was him. One of the most bizarre self-portraits in Renaissance history. Thanks for watching! Who's your favorite painter of all time? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!